What's up, you guys? It's Avery here. One to bring you guys the first place Dragon Duels World Championship Chamber in deck profile. I know I'm a few days late on this, and I actually am doing this by a screenshot um, from another person who posted this um, deck on YouTube, and his uh, name is Exodia Dash Man. So big shout out to him for posting this. Really appreciate it. Um, I just haven't had time to actually like sit down and talk about this yet, but now I do want to talk about this. So before I get into it, I just want to say that the side deck is pretty much just kind of whatever you want it to be. The extra deck is completely irrelevant. Um, basically what he wanted to do with the side deck was just kind of, I guess, make it sort of stally and I guess Genzo for the mirror match. Um, yeah, it side deck's just kind of whatever you want it to be. But I wanted to also make this another episode of Perfecting Chamber, because even though this was only in Dragon Duels, there is still certain things that we can take from this deck and that we can learn from. So, with all that being kept in mind, let's go ahead and dive into this. That's why he's not playing three card demise, and probably not even three pot of desires. I think both were put at two on the world's banner. So let's just go ahead and get into it. So He's playing two backjack, uh, one magician of faith, one maxi, one dice jar, and then one cami on the time lord. Um, the time lords are an interesting pick, uh, even in the side deck because they're kind of more of a slow burn card, but it can also kind of mess with your opponent's board. You know, whether you're sending back all spells and traps or sending back all monsters, um, and then making the opponent take damage, it's definitely uh, interesting. I think it's not really something I would want to play personally. Um, backjack was something that chamber and players were playing kind of on and off. Um, if you don't know what it does, just during the opponent's turn, you can banish it from the graveyard. It's a quick effect. Excavate the top card of your deck, and if it's a normal trap, you set it. And otherwise, you send it to the graveyard, and the set card can be activated this turn. And then he has, like, another effect where you can look at the top three cards of your deck and arrange them in, like, any order or something like that. It's an alright card. Um, you, again, you have to keep in mind that this was the world's format. Right, so, you know, you're not expecting, you know, Gravekeepers or just some random no-tier deck, you know, whether it's Black Wings or something like that. Someone's going to get triggered because I just mentioned Black Wings being no-tier, but that's whatever. Um, same thing with Magician of Faith and Dice Jar. Magician of Faith is definitely good for recycling your spells, but it's like, at the same time, what are you really recycling other than Pot of Duality or Card of Demise? It's just, it's not all that great in my opinion maxi it's maxi sure why not um dice jar is garbage don't play dice jar uh essentially you roll a six-sided die and whoever has the lower result takes damage equal to the opponent's higher result times times 600 and if a player rolls a six then the other player takes six thousand damage and then if it's a tie you roll again it's a garbage card don't play it i think he was just playing this as a troll card it's a terrible garbage flip effect monster don't play it so then for the spells, we got three Pot of Duality, two Desires, two Card of Demise, and two Chain Strike. Don't play Desires. Desires is trash. Uh, you're banishing your resources when you don't want to be banishing your resources. So we were never playing Pot of Desires to draw two cards after losing ten resources. Um, for the traps, we have two Balance of Judgment, two Blazing Mirror Force, two Dimension Wall, three Just Desserts, three Reckless Greed, three Secret Barrel, three Secret Blast, three Threatening Roar, one Wabaku, one Ring of Destruction, and two Ojama Trio. For the side deck, we have two, I think it's pronounced Cepheon? I don't remember. And then we have, uh, two of whatever this thing is, it's irrelevant. Jinzo, three Fossil Dina, two Fairy Tale Cards, two Dark Hole, two Aegis Agaia, and Photon Shockwave, I think is that trap card's name? And the extra deck is irrelevant. And like I said before, the side deck's kind of irrelevant. It's whatever you really want to make it into. Personally, what I do for big events, and what my dad also does, is that normally we'll have it be a burn deck, like game one and or two, depending on how the match goes. And then usually by the time, by that point, time is usually pretty low. So, you know, we'll, it, again, depending on the match, we will side deck into more like a stall burn, so that we can kind of win in time. Kind of the same thing I used to do a long time ago with self-destruct button. Um... But, yeah. So, uh, to discuss the traps, because this is where things kind of get interesting. The first thing you'll probably notice is the fact that he's not playing Accumulated Fortune. Now, this is very, uh, I think, player preference, because of the fact that Accumulated Fortune does have to be on a chain link 4 or higher. Um, but it is nice that you can chain Accumulated to Accumulated and draw 4 cards and not just 2. Balance of Judgment is also another good card, especially if the opponent doesn't really know how to play against Chain Burn. They'll just kind of plus and go off and do whatever, and then you can just activate Balance of Judgment and just draw so many cards. Um, but at, again, what is he really going to draw into when he's not really playing any hand traps like Swift Scarecrow and Battlefader? That's why Swift Scarecrow and Battlefader are very much necessities in this deck. 
And that's why I'm very surprised that, you know, he actually won Dragon Duels. I mean, maybe the kids just weren't all that good or something. I, I don't know. But again, this is Dragon Duels, so I guess it's kind of expected. Um, but just, he should have played Hand Traps. He really should have. And, and this is why I wanted to make this a Perfecting Chamber in episode, because... You know, you're seeing the basically the flip side of the coin where he's kind of going more aggro with his burn and he's not relying on hand traps or anything. He's just more relying on getting to his burn cards as quick as he can and burning the opponent for as much damage as he can. Whereas, you know, a normal shame burn deck, you would see, you know, the battle faders, the swift scarecrows, all that fun stuff. Uh, Dimension Wall is obviously a very good pick in any Chain Burn deck, whether you're playing in Worlds, Regionals, Locals, anything. Dimension Wall is so good. It gets around things like Lance. It basically gets around things that Magic Cylinder can't. Um, for those of you who don't know how Dimension Wall works, essentially its effect reads that uh, when you activate this card, your opponent takes damage you would have taken from battle instead. So let's say I have a Blue Eyes on the field and I'm swinging at you for 3,000, I activate Dimension Wall, and you chain Forbidden Lance. The way that Dimension Wall is worded, because it's not actually affecting the monster, it's technically affecting your life points. Because the attack's not being negated, it's not targeting the monster, it's not like Magic Cylinder. The attack still goes through, just any damage that I take, up to the point that I take damage, is reversed to you. So, you can chain Lance all day, that's fine. The Blue Eyes will lose 800 attack points, and then he'll be at 22, but then instead of me taking the 22, you're going to take the 2200 instead. A lot of people get very confused with Dimension Wall, and it's a very, very good card because of that, because people don't really understand how it works. You know, people say, oh, it's just like Magic Cylinder. You're right, it is just like Magic Cylinder. However, it doesn't target the monster, it technically targets your life points, if we really want to get specific, and it, it, it really can't be stopped by anything unless you have like a Dark Bribe or something. Um, for stall, I think he did all right on stall. If you really want to call Blazing Mirror Force a, a stall card, if you don't want to count that or Ring of Destruction, he technically has four stall cards. I personally would have done more stall. Um, Secret Blast is very good, especially if the opponent wants to try and pop off with like Twin Twister. You can chain Secret Blast, they take 300 damage for every card they control, and then a Secret Blast is destroyed by a card effect, and they take an additional thousand. So imagine doing like, you know, 1800 or something like that with Secret Blast plus an additional thousand. If the opponent's at 8,000, they're already at 5,200. Ojama Trio, I still think, is a terrible garbage card now just because of Link format. Um, you can easily make Firewall Dragon. Um, because the Ojama Trio tokens are technically normal monsters because they're not specifically listed as effect monsters, uh, it basically just gives you an easy way to make Firewall Dragon. Um, that's why I also think that Ojama Duo is not all that good, because if you activate Ojama Trio and Ojama Duo, if the opponent's playing Firewall Dragon, they're just going to use four of those tokens for Firewall, and then all their, pretty much all their monster zones are open backed up. So, but I wanted to cover this deck and just kind of show you that, I guess, innovation can happen in a skillless deck, um, just because I've never seen a chamber deck like this before. Um, Dice Jar, I still think is a terrible garbage card, um, but I guess the kid just got lucky, and I mean, again, it was Dragon Duels, so take that for what you will, but I still think, to a certain degree, there is still a level of knowledge to be gained from this deck list, and just how this kid went about playing, um, excluding the side deck and the extra deck, because the extra deck's obviously pointless unless you're playing Try and Guess on the side, um, or in the main, if you want to be cute, um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think uh, in the comments down below. I'd really like to see what you guys think about this episode of Perfecting Chamber. Um, if I had to rate this deck, I would give it a, uh, quite honestly, a 5 out of 10. I think that there could be a lot of better changes made. Um, and again, it is World, so he, he had to play by a specific ban list. Um, but I think if you were to take this like a regional or something in like a TCG regular ban list, I think it would just scrub out because this, this list just is not very good. So anyway, that's all I got for you guys. Thank you guys for watching as always and subscribe if you have not already. Also, thank you for really supporting that Judge Judy video. It has almost a thousand views, so I'm, I'm really happy about that. Thank you guys.